and welcome to another episode of Technicational. Now it's been a long time coming I had to do the IM5 smartphone from Kodak. So this is the full review of this phone. And boy, it took me long, but it even took me longer to actually adjust to this phone. And before we go any further, you can get this device from Royal Computers and Accessories in the Pavilion Mall. The link is in the description below. Anyhow, let's get right to the review. So this is the IM5 smartphone from Kodak and it's kind of not one of those phones will have a lot of stuff on it. It's right to the point, it takes picture and it's an Android device and it don't have all the clutter that most other phones have. It's a budget phone, keyword on budget. It's not like the Y360 $2,000 or 2005 what Flo is selling it for. It's more in the 10,000, you know, the 10,000 or $11,000 range. So it's not high high, but it's not low low, if you get my drift. So how does it actually stack up to everything out there? What's the core feature and the stuff like that? Well, let's get right to it. So the price you're paying for this, what actually are you getting? Well, let's talk about that. Specifications. First of all, you get a 720p screen that is 5 inch and you get a front flash and a front camera that is 5 megapixel. You get a back flash and a back camera that is 13 megapixel. You also get a octa-core processor in here and you get 1 gig of RAM. By the way, the octa-core processor is running at 1.7 gigahertz. Also, you get 8 gigs. I really don't think that is enough. Uh, well, anyway, you get 8 gigs of internal space. But the good news is that it has a SD card slot to expand that storage whenever you feel like you're running out. The phone also have dual SIM capability, so you can use your Digicel and your Lime in here and whichever one you want to use the data for, it's good and fine. And guess what folks, all of this is being run by Android 4.4. There's some rumors, I don't know how true it is or if it's actually going to come out, but they say this is going to be upgraded to 5.1. I haven't seen it as yet. So you also get your mic down here with your USB port and at the top you have your headphone jack and we have to point out this because guess what people, you have phones nowadays going to come out without a headphone jack aka iPhone 7. Don't know how that will work out. So on the design part of things, there's a couple of things I need to point out. You have your power button at the top of the device. You have your headphone jack, as I said before, at the top of the device. You have your volume rocker at the right. You have your SD card slot at the right. You have your two SIM card ports on the left of the phone. And the screen is not Gorilla Glass, which is kind of a bummer. So one thing I really don't like is the fact that this thing doesn't have a removable battery. Nope. I don't really like phones with that because, you know, when the battery goes bad, you have to carry it to a technician to actually open it up and put back a new battery in there, which costs more money than just buying the battery yourself. Also, there's this ridge at the back that serves for a couple of things. When you're holding the phone to take a landscape photo, kind of feel nice to hold it with this right here also the speaker is located here and without this ridge this line flat at a table wouldn't sound that loud whatsoever so this raises it up a little bit so the ringing or whatever you're doing on the phone can actually come out better so now that we're finished talking about specification and design Let's talk about how the phone actually works day to day. First thing, screen. The color is lovely. It's not AMOLED, but it does look good. And it is pretty bright in the night. Daylight, I have a problem. Because it's a touch screen and you're touching the screen and stuff, 
you have so much fingerprint left on it and it's not really all that easy to wipe off because it's not really gorilla glass so you have to put a little force into it to clean this glass off i'm still trying to get this damn fingerprint off you know what forget it the sound from the speaker is not the best i've heard from a smartphone it is high pitched but it has no body that's my problem you can hear it, everything is good, but it has no mid or bass, nothing at all. It's just really high pitch. It's like one of those bus man them where turn up the sound too loud with a tweeter alone in the bus. But while we're on the topic of sound and sound quality, I have to say, this volume rocker, seriously, look at the size of it. This is my thumb and this is the volume rocker. A lot of times you are trying to press this up or down, you press the whole thing, which gives you nothing. Or probably you're pressing down and it then not press up. See, I'm trying to press down here and there it goes, up and down. So the call quality is good, I really like the call quality and because the phone is so small it fits right in your hand, right at the ears and you don't feel like it's going to fall out your hand at all pretty decent on a daily run i have to say the phone doesn't really get hot it feels pretty solid in your hands and the fact that the battery life will last you for the day i am just ecstatic that the battery life lasts for the day so let's move on to the part that everybody wants to know about the camera quality and the video quality so you have a front facing camera with flash and front facing camera up here is 5 megapixel and the back camera is 13 megapixel with a flash as well now the fact that kodak is a camera company i am expecting a lot now as you can see folks it varies obviously the night photos are you know what i'm not going to say anything you can see it right there and this goes for the back camera as well. The back camera takes good photos in good lighting. But once you start taking photos in the dark, uh, uh. so you know how this usually goes. I usually do a benchmark and see the score, but guess what? It is really not relevant because this is not really geared to the high-end spec and everything but how does it function day to day it's pretty average it's not the fastest thing on the block but it's pretty average and it's able to run most games out now so what are my final thoughts on this phone the kodak im5 smartphone well hear what this phone is geared towards the older crowd that really need a smartphone but don't really want to use a smartphone if you get my drift the icons are big so that you can see what you're touching you get a decent front camera once you're taking photos in the day and a decent back camera again once you're taking photos in the day the volume rock on the side still needs some little getting used to and the power button at the top is a strange location because we don't really find power buttons at the top of phones anymore but all in all you get a good battery life and you get a solid phone that pretty much won't break unless you throw it against a wall is it worth the money well that really depends on your budget anyhow folks Thank you guys for watching and this has been another review and I'm pretty annoyed with the screen though. I might get a cleaning cloth just to put it back in the box. Ew. So thank you guys for watching and continue to subscribe. I am loving the growth of the channel and I am trying to get more stuff. Dave is back on board so we have more videos to come. Thank you guys and until next time. Peace.